Chapter 371 to 373. At the temporary base of Tri Alliance. The current atmosphere at the camp was heavy. Damn Akatsuki, damn Kiri, how dare Mizukage work with the Akatsuki? Rikage roared in anger. After learning what happened on Suna's side, especially the fact that the Kazakage is missing, of all things everyone was shocked and angered at the same time, more so at Mizukage who actually dared to step in and help the Akatsuki. Hokage muttered with a solemn expression, Kazakage Dano is missing. Jinchuriki of Nibi is captured by them and is being used by Akatsuki, 90% of the manpower we brought with us is dead, this result is too devastating. Pakura said coldly, our idea of raid this time was too reckless, especially our attempt of sending a team for pre-investigation, if we hadn't done that and went on with the approach as the shinobi from Konoha had said to launch a direct assault on the Akatsuki without any pre-investigation, perhaps the result would have been much different than what it is now. When Pakura pointed this out both Hokage and Reikage had more guilty expressions. True, if only we had followed that approach. The leader of Amatsukami would have fought with the leader of Akatsuki anyway, but we could have cut our losses to a very minimum, Hokage thought. Hokage questioned Pakura, and how will Suna now proceed? Pakura thought about Hokage's question, then said, I am not the one to decide here, those above me will decide and then the elder council of Suna will execute it, a new Kazakage must be chosen, there is no other option, well, that's all I can say for now. Hokage nodded and said, as allies, Kanoha will give Suna and Kumo all the help that's needed. At times like these, it is better to give all the help other villages need to recuperate from their losses such that their alliance grows stronger and Akatsuki or Amatsukami cannot take advantage of the rift that may occur between them. Therefore, Hokage is willing to give out some monetary concessions if it can help Kanoha in dealing with the enemy in the long run. Pakura bowed to Hokage, that would be very kind of you Hokage Dano, I thank you on behalf of Sunagakir. At the same time, Reikage also nodded gratefully to Hokage's kindness, then questioned, all that aside, for now, we have to focus on Akatsuki's objective, from what I am told, the leader of Akatsuki plans to collect all the bijou to create a weapon of mass destruction. Akatsuki has already captured Yujito, which means that they already have Nibi in their hands, it's also possible that they have also captured the Jinchuriki of Rokubi as he is missing along with the Kazakage, we don't know which bijou will they go after next time, so we have to formulate plans to ensure the safety of Jinchuriki, while also a plan to rescue the Jinchuriki that have been captured by them. Pakura nodded and continued, at the same time, we have to also figure out what exactly has been going on in Kirigakure, and why exactly is Mizukage cooperating with Akatsuki. Hokage nodded and said, we have to also start forming a united alliance of all the shinobi village, the existence of Akatsuki is threatening the entire shinobi world as a whole, and we don't know the true depths of Akatsuki so it is better that we plan ahead while keeping the worst situations into account. Reikage said, true, but first, we have to find a way to rescue the captured Jinchuriki. Hokage nodded towards Reikage then said to Pakura, Sunagakure need not worry about the lives of Chio and Ebizo, we will provide them with the best medical treatment, I will have my disciple Sunade personally take care of it. Pakura again bowed towards Hokage and said, Suna will be very grateful. Hokage then stated, in conclusion, all three villages will use their own means to collect information on the location of Akatsuki's new base, and keep each other updated on that information to prepare directed countermeasures. Reikage and Pakura nodded, then Hokage stated, with that, this meeting is adjourned. When Hokage walked out of the meeting room of the three parties he instructed Jiraiya, find and bring Tsunade back to the village at the shortest time possible, this time she does not have any choice in the matter, it's an order from the Hokage, is that understood? Jiraiya nodded and disappeared. On Kuroto and Itachi's side. Both Kuroto and Itachi were currently flying in the direction of Anchor Vantion that was hovering over the rain clouds of the Land of Rain. At this time Itachi asked, Kuroto-san, are you alright? Kuroto said, it's nothing too serious, just the amount of natural energy in my body is much more than what I am adapted to, it would be fine after I wash it out completely with my own chakra, so it's nothing to worry about. After that, both of them were quiet until the Air Fortress came into sight. Landing on the air fortress Kuroto asked Itachi as the two walked deeper into the air fortress, Itachi Kuen, how much time do you have in your hand? Itachi thought about it and said, as per your instructions, my Jonin sensei, as well as the two other members of my Genin team, are in a genjutsu of mine. A Karasu Kage Bushin is keeping them accompanied in the missions. I have also made sure to stretch the mission times as long as possible within a reasonable limit that wouldn't arouse anyone's suspicions so I would say that I still have a week at my hand. In that case. Poof. Before Kuroto could say anything further a crow appeared in front of him from a poof of white smoke. Kuroto raised his eyebrow and after taking out the small scroll from the crow he unfolded it and read the content. This is. He was taken aback by the information written on it. Itachi was confused at Kuroto's shocked expression, what happened Kuroto-san? Kuroto passed the scroll to Itachi while saying, the Yandame Kazakage of Sunagakure is. Missing. Itachi was also shocked. 
Kuroto thought a little and said, although it is stated that he is missing, but based on the additional information I can judge that he is most definitely dead, there is no otherwise. Based on this ritual circle made out of blood? Itachi asked again. Kuroto nodded while he thought of Haydn, Haydn is literally too dangerous if used correctly, just a drop of a person's blood and he can kill anyone no matter how far that person is, it's not strange if Yandame Kazakage Raza is already dead. Also, Kakashi did mention that he encountered Haydn while he was searching for the traces of Akatsuki. Damn, I never would have thought that Haydn would have been recruited into Akatsuki at such an early stage. At this time Itachi asked, Kuroto-san? Kuroto shook his head and said to Itachi, Itachi-kun, I have a new mission for you. Itachi nodded prompting Kuroto to continue. Kuroto said, there are two parts in this mission, firstly since the Kazakage is missing, so there is a need of new Kazakage, although I am certain that no one other than Pakura is currently capable of filling that position in Sunagakyur, but I want you to go to Sunagakyur and ensure that Pakura becomes Godame Kazakage without any opposition. Itachi nodded, alright, and what's the second? Kuroto said, for the second part, after Pakura becomes the Kazakage, instruct her to investigate a religion called Jashin, this religion is the key to the death of Yandame Kazakage. Jashin? Itachi muttered thoughtfully. Kuroto nodded and explained, I am not sure as to what exactly this religion is, but this symbol is the symbol of Jashin. From what little information I have, a follower of Jashin is capable of becoming a living voodoo doll. Once that living voodoo doll ingests even a drop of blood from his target, he is capable of torturing and killing that person very easily. Moreover, the living voodoo doll becomes an immortal as such killing him becomes too difficult, as far as I know, there is only one method, and that too is not certain if he is rescued by others. If that is the case then how to deal with such a person? Itachi muttered while analyzing. Every jutsu has its weakness so there has to be something that can be used. Kuroto said, it's not that I don't have some theories about other methods, but we need more information, without that, I cannot be certain, so investigating Jashin itself is really important. Itachi nodded, it will be done. Then his body divided into hundreds of crows which then flew outside the air fortress, in the direction of Sunagakyur. With Itachi gone, Kuroto gritted his teeth in frustration, damn it. After Itachi had gone, Kuroto moved deeper into the fortress and was soon greeted by Gara and Karen who have been staying here for a while now. Looking at Kuroto's pale look and struggle in moving, Gara asked quickly, Kuroto-sama are you, are you alright? Karen also said, if you are injured, th, then you can take a bite, it should heal. Kuroto shook his head and said with a gentle smile, don't worry, I am, not injured, the problem is something else and it wouldn't heal that way, both of you can continue to do what you were doing, and by the way, Gara I have to talk to you about something but it will have to wait some time. Karen had a disappointed look, while Gara was worried and also curious as to what is it that Kuroto wants to talk to him about. However, for now, both of them did as Kuroto said and did not disturb him. Both the kids know that they are far too immature and lack knowledge and true understanding of a whole lot of things, so they have come to believe that if Kuroto is saying something, then it must be the case. After sending away the two kids, Kuroto reached his private quarters. Here, Kuroto took off all his clothes to check the exact status of his body and realized that the area of petrification this time was more than the last time. However, because his body is already somewhat used to natural energy, he was sure that it would only take him about two weeks at most to wash away all the extra natural energy. Unfortunately, I don't have two weeks at my hand. I will have to do the bare minimum that I can and then go back to Kanoha around the same time everyone returns, because the impact that this news will bring to Kanoha is too much, Kuroto muttered and then started to wash out natural energy from all his joints so that he can at least carry out all the basic movements. And while doing so he also summarized this entire raid on Akatsuki. Benefits, to be honest, there were no benefits in this raid, but I can make myself feel optimistic by thinking that the information about Akatsuki and the true level of danger they represent can now be revealed to the shinobi world. The fact that the joint high-level force of Kanoha, Kyumo, and Suna couldn't suppress Akatsuki will cause a shock for the entire shinobi world. So everyone will start taking the threat of Akatsuki more seriously. Additionally, the fact that something is wrong with Kirigakure is also revealed too. From the Tri-Alliance, the death of Kazakage, capture of Jinchuriki of Nibi, injuries of Inoshika Cho Patriarch, injuries of Elder Chio and Elder Ebizo, as well as death of 90% of combat personnel involved in this raid. And as for other losses, the information about Yama's power was revealed although not completely as things like truth-seeking balls, Tensigen Chakra mode, and other Jutsu would still be a mystery for everyone other than Zetsu, additionally, there's also a further decrease in Shirsue's visual prowess, so he is only a few steps away from total blindness. In addition, there are a few other concerns too, and that is the fact that Nagato has finally decided to stand up, and for that, he even accepted Abito and Zetsu's help, he stood up with the power of a Zetsu clone. These two are very big things. It must not be forgotten that even though Nagato and Conan were working under the orders of Madara, both of them were still extremely cautious of him. 
precisely because of this Conan prepared 600 billion explosive tags in secret to kill Madara. Madara was also the same, he never revealed many truths to Nagato and Conan, especially the ones like Izanagi, other Kenjutsu, Juinjutsu, biotechnologies, and secrets that Madara left behind were never revealed to Nagato. Such differences continued until the very end. Their ultimate goal may be peace, but the meaning of peace differs for both of them and the method to achieve their own definitions of peace also differs for both of them. One is a self-proclaimed god who believes that pain and suffering are the only way to peace, therefore he intends to create a weapon of mass destruction to achieve his own definition of peace, while the other person is a self-centered individual who has given up on everything in this shinobi world, as such he wants the whole world to be covered in a genjutsu to achieve an illusionary peace. Both of them had their determinations to achieve their goals and for that, they were unwilling to compromise. However, that's no longer the case here, at least partially. The existence of Amitsukami, more specifically, the existence of Yama who almost killed Nagato is the main reason why they had to put aside their own barriers and cooperate. Now the most important question here is, can Nagato successfully fuse Hashirama's cell in his body? This is a doubt lingering in Kuroto's mind. Kuroto carefully thought of all the known people who have been successfully transplanted with Hashirama cells, and found one common factor in all of them except for one. Except for Yamato, the lucky boy who survived Orochimaru's experiment, all other people had Uchiha's Sharingan as the common factor, although the degree of adaptation with Hashirama cells varied from person to person depending on their visual prowess. Uchiha Madara had a single eternal Manjikyu Sharingan at the time of cell transplantation. After successfully transplanting Hashirama cells, Uchiha Madara not only awakened Mokutan and was as proficient with it as Nonsenin Senja Hashirama, he also awakened the Rinnegan. Uchiha Abito also had only one Sharingan at the time of cell transplantation. He did survive and in fact, half of his body is made up of Hashirama cells. Uchiha Abito too awakened Mokutan, but perhaps it was because of his weak strength at the time of transplantation, or probably because of the lack of Atsutsuki Indra's chakra, his Mokutan was quite weak in fact, at least weak compared to Uchiha Madara. The third known individual who survived the Hashirama cell transplantation is Shimura Danzo. He may not be a member of the Uchiha clan, but he did possess quite a lot of Sharingan, and therefore, he was also able to use Uchiha's Kenjutsu, Izanagi. As for Mokutan, Danzo did awaken Mokutan, but his control over Mokutan was even weaker than Uchiha Abido's. Be that as it may, he was only able to balance the Yang Chakra that comes with Hashirama cell with Yin Chakra of Uchiha's Sharingan. In conclusion, it wouldn't be wrong to say that, theoretically, as long as someone can balance out the Yang Chakra that comes with Hashirama cells he can survive Hashirama cell transplantation. Nagato is inherently an Uzumaki so his young constitution is predominant, additionally he also bears a pair of Rinnegan, moreover, he also has Geto Mazo with him, there is also Hiroko at his side and most of all, he would have also gained all the knowledge Uchiha Madara had left behind that would help him out a lot. Given that Geto Mazo can both give life force as well as suck on the life force. Geto Mazo is a solution for both the problem that can come during the transplantation process. Extra life force can be sucked out and lack of life force can be provided, so if I think about it, at this point in time, Nagato has the most chances of surviving Hashirama cell transplantation. He would be facing the least amount of risk. Besides, Uzumaki Naruto did get his right hand made out of Hashirama cells, so the Uzumaki constitution shouldn't reject Hashirama cells to such a degree. Kuroto sighed, it's a shame that I was unable to kill Nagato, and if Hashirama cells are transplanted into him, then he would definitely avoid the deterioration of his body because of my attack. What's more troublesome is that once Nagato is transplanted with Hashirama cells, he might even awaken Mokutan and if he does it is highly likely that his Mokutan will be as strong as Nonsenin mode Hashirama's Mokutan because of his high amount of Yang Chakra. Moreover, once the Uzumaki and Senju physique are combined successfully his physical strength will also increase exponentially, it might even reach the level of Rikudo Senin himself. His already massive Chakra will gain another massive boost. There is also a possibility that he can learn to use Senjutsu perfectly which would mean that he can use Senpu, Mokutan he might even be able to further explore Madara's Rinnegan. Awakening abilities that only Madara used. I really don't want to think about the possibility of him being able to use Susanoo, it's highly unlikely because he doesn't have Uchiha genes, but there is always an if, and this if is really too scary. If he is really able to use Susanoo too, then I am not even sure what would I do then, Kuroto thought as his face paled after realizing all of these possible ifs. Damn, did my actions just create the appearance of a monster who is a combination of full-powered Rinnegan Uchiha Madara and Senin Mode Senja Hashirama? But all of these, if. Depends on another if, such things will only happen, if, Abito agrees is willing to take the risk, and the question is, will Abito do so? Shimura Danzo was at the forefront of it all and angrily questioned as to why was such an important mission hidden from the Elder Council. Faced with the anger and questioning of the three advisor elders, Sandane was speechless. The prestige of Sandame was seriously affected by this failed mission. 
even his control over the village was greatly weakened because of the heavy losses in the Umbu, moreover, this mission indeed caused severe losses to Kanoha so he had no way to argue with the three. Fortunately, enough, both Mitokado Hamura and Yudatane Koharu are old acquaintances of Hiruzen and understand his nature and troubles very well. So after a while of berating, both of them finally calmed down and did not pressure Sandame too much. Shimura Danzo is also not innocent. He had formerly teamed up with Hanzo to deal with the former leader of Akatsuki, Yahiko, so he knows that he has much involvement in making Akatsuki the way it is today, therefore, he also chose to stay in moderation after venting a little and did not pressure Hiruzen too much for his failure. Because Danzo is growing more and more afraid as the true extent of Akatsuki's danger is being revealed and fears that the current leader of Akatsuki will definitely come after him sooner or later. Therefore, he does not want to lose his backing in the form of Hokage for the time being, until he is sure he can defeat the leader of Akatsuki and seize Rinnegan for himself. After all three elders calmed down, Sandame also breathed a sigh of relief. Taking a deep breath he muttered with a tired expression, this time, the responsibility of this failure indeed falls on my shoulder. Yudatane Koharu said, that may be true, but I am really amazed that even the joint force of three villages could not confront Akatsuki on equal grounds, much less eliminating them. Mitokado Hamura stated, moreover, such an Akatsuki was suppressed by Amitsukami, just what is going on with the shinobi world. Since the establishment of the shinobi village system, the five great villages have always been the leader of the shinobi world, they treat each other as somewhat equals while every other village or organization was looked down upon or used for their own benefits. But now the pattern seems to be changing. Sandame sighed, however shocking it may be, it is the truth, and we have no choice but to accept this reality. Five great shinobi villages that once stood at the top of the pyramid of power are no longer there, the likes of Akatsuki and Amitsukami now stand at the top. After speaking so, Sandame further explained the entire raid in detail, although he omitted the part of Tobi being able to use Mokutan for now. Danzo's eyes flickered at a particular detail, Hiroko was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the wreckage. Both in terms of speed and power. Sandame nodded with a solemn look, he was, in fact, he had the upper hand, in terms of both speed, reaction speed, as well as strength. Reikic himself admitted it. Chimera no Jutsu. I must obtain it from Orochimaru as soon as possible, Danzo thought. At this time Hiruzen also mentioned Amitsukami's proposal to the three elders and asked what are their opinions on this. Mitokado said after some consideration, for the proposal from Amitsukami, since we cannot fight against Akatsuki, then it is best to use Amitsukami to confront them, by doing so we can make both organizations eliminate each other. Danzo nodded, it's the best decision for the time being. Koharu also nodded in agreement, I agree, it doesn't seem to be a bad decision, however we have to be careful when dealing with them otherwise, Koharu did not complete, and nor was there any need to. All the three elders understood the repercussions of playing with fire. Sandame finally nodded. He has considered this a lot and this seems to be the only way to restrain the power of Akatsuki. At this time Danzo questioned, Hiruzen, what do you plan to do with Sunagakure? Kazakage is missing, Chio and Ebizo are at death's door, only Pakura of the Scorch remains. Hiruzen frowned at Danzo's words, what do you suggest? Danzo said coldly, I suggest we take Sunagakure under our full command, this way, Kanoha's might will increase and we will stand a better chance against Akatsuki and Amatsu. No. However, before Danzo could even finish his words he was interrupted by Sandane. Danzo frowned, and anger started to well up inside him, why not? Suna is at its weakest right now. Kanoha can easily take control of Suna, in fact, you don't even need to use Kanoha's shinobi army, my root alone will be able to handle it. I said no, that means no. Hiruzen said coldly, I want no aggression between any shinobi villages at this point, if we make a move, Tsuchikage will not stay behind. Reikage too will not stay silent, moreover, Suna will not easily accept it. And I am more than 90% sure that they will turn to Amitsukami and join hands with them. Neither will Kanoha meddle in Suna's personal matters nor will we allow others to meddle in their personal matters, this decision is final, is that understood? Understood. Danzo nodded, although begrudgingly. The other two elders nodded as well. Sandame next said, next we will hold the Jonin Council meeting and relay the information to all the Jonins, we are in a serious need of manpower. Danzo sneered, after the Third's Great Shinobi War, most of the senior Jonin, especially the ones who are part of the noble Shinobi clans have retired from active Shinobi lives. What do you plan to do about them? Hiruzen was silent and looked at Danzo expecting him to continue. Danzo understood, and said, Kanoha is already short on manpower. I suggest that you order them to return to active duty and have them train more recruits from the academy, this way, the majority of the shinobi will be under the orders of the Hokage faction and solve the problem of manpower. Agreed, both Koharu and Mitokado nodded as well. As experienced politicians both Mitokado and Yudatane can very well understand what Danzo intends to do here, and honestly, they have no problem with it. 
the noble clans have been enjoying their luxury for quite a while, and it is time that they get to work. Besides, as Danzo said, the current Kanoha really does lack manpower. After pondering for a while Hiruzen nodded. Just as Danzo felt proud of himself, Sandame glanced at him with a cold look and questioned, by the way, do you have something that you want to tell me about experiments related to Shodame samas cells? At Amage Cure. After the entire battlefield was cleaned up and all the clues that might have been left behind by Akatsuki discovered, the leftover of Tri-Alliance was ready to withdraw from Amage Cure. In the cleanup process, the Tri-Alliance also found unconscious Samui. After Samui was found the Tri-Alliance hoped that some sort of useful intelligence of Akatsuki can be obtained from her, but strangely enough, she never regained consciousness. She was alive, all her vital signs were normal, she was breathing, her pulse rate was normal, her body temperature was normal, yet she was unconscious and it didn't seem that she would regain her consciousness anytime soon. Hokage even ordered Yamanaka and Noichi to check what exactly was happening with her, and see if he could find some memories of her of the time she was captured. But after probing inside her consciousness for a long while. Yamanaka Patriarch found nothing except for pure emptiness. It felt as if she was no longer there, or more precisely, it felt as if her soul was no longer present in her body. It was strange considering the fact that she was alive, yet it seemed that there was no soul inside her. Everyone was confused. Reikage muttered with a frown, what sort of jutsu can do something like this? She is alive and at the same time she is not. Yamanaka Patriarch added, in all my life as a shinobi. I have never seen something like this before, it seems as if she is completely brain dead, but it's different from brain dead, it's more like there is nothing inside her brain, no memories, no emotions, no awareness, and to be exact, no existence. I am not even sure if she will ever regain consciousness. Pakura questioned, is there any way she can be treated? Yamanaka Patriarch answered, I am not so sure, perhaps I can try a few things but it will take time. How much time? Reikage questioned eagerly. I cannot say for certain, a few months at least, and even then I am not sure if it will work out. Yamanaka Patriarch answered Reikage's question. Reikage was silent upon hearing Yamanaka Patriarch's words. Yamanaka Patriarch's words mean that Samui will have to stay in Kanoha so that he can try those few methods to see if they work, staying in Kanoha means she will be vulnerable to giving out Kumo's intelligence to Kanoha. All eyes gathered on Reikage, it is his decision. In the entire shinobi world when it comes to the study of the human brain, Yamanaka clan is unmatched, so technically having Samui under the care of the Yamanaka clan is reasonably the best option, but it also concerns the safety of the village. Currently, Akatsuki is the common enemy, I suppose I will have to risk it, there is no other option, Reikage thought silently, then said, alright, Samui will stay in Kanoha, but two shinobi from my village will also be staying with her to take care of her. Hokage nodded in agreement, that sounds acceptable, I have no problem with it. Reikage also added, additionally, I also want a regular report of her status. Yamanaka Patriarch nodded, I will make sure to keep her status in check and I will also relay it to the two Kyumo shinobi on a regular basis. In that case let Samui stay in Kanoha and find out all that she may have come to know about the Akatsuki for the time she was captured. Reikage said. Hokage nodded, certainly. With that agreement, the Tri-Alliance finally split into three units and each unit went on their way to their respective villages. The personnel of Tri-Alliance left behind at the site of the pre-war council meeting was still there and they united with their respective units. After all, was said and done, Maki, Baki, as well as the leftover Suna Shinobi, followed Pakura to Sunagakure. On the other hand, unconscious elder Chio and elder Ebizo along with two Suna Shinobi and two Kanoha Shinobi, who were left behind at the place where the pre-war meeting was conducted, followed Jiraiya in search of Tsunade. Killer B as well as other Kyumo Shinobi followed Reikage to Kyumogakure. While two other Kyumo Shinobi carried Samui and followed Hokage to Kanoha as per Reikage's orders. On their way to Kanoha, Sandame specifically summoned Hyuga Kuroto for some inquiry, Kuroto, were you able to see through Tobi's mask and figure out his true identity? Hokage had hoped that Hyuga Kuroto with his Byakugan could have seen through the guise of Tobi. But Hokage has to be disappointed as Kuroto shook his head, please forgive me Hokage-sama, but my Byakugan was unable to see through his mask, similar to the case with those of Amatsukami. If real Hyuga Kuroto was present here, he might have taken the advantage of this opportunity and revealed that Tobi is actually Achiha Abito, however, Sandame Kazakage puppet is not aware of this information, therefore, he shook his head, as Byakugan's penetration really does not work on Tobi's mask because of many seals on it. Sandame was disappointed, but he did not say anything more to Kuroto. The child had already done quite a lot and he cannot be blamed for this whatsoever. After all, it was Hyuga Kuroto, who discovered Akatsuki's base and everything, even Samui was discovered by Hyuga Kuroto, so by no means, he is to be blamed. Traveling all the way, the unit led by Hokage soon left the land of rain and returned to the land of fire. After the three Kage returned to their respective villages, the news of the joint raid conducted by Kanoha, Kumo, and Suna was announced. 
The news was not still not made public due to many reasons but the higher management of each village was informed. When the three elders of Kanoha Elder Council learned that Hokage had secretly led the elite Umbu unit to launch a raid on Akatsuki they were shocked. And upon learning the devastating results they seriously berated Sarutobi Hiruzen, 